kids, you know, they, they weave up a fantasy world and then they play out an identity in that. And then they weave out another fantasy world and they play out an identity with that. And they shape that identity by their interactions with other children and adults. That's all part of this exploration of who they could be. The play is, in fact, the exercising of that realm of possibilities. And so a good father, a good parent, puts a border of security around the child. You know, and the mother might be inside that border of security when she has young children. And play can take place there. And the play is the investigation of multiple identities with the hope of finding one that is functional, that is also socially desired because those things can't be dissociated. Your identity is not just who, how you feel about yourself at this moment. And you can't impose that on other people because they don't know how to deal with that. Like, even if they wanted to, they wouldn't know the rules of the game. You have to negotiate your identity with other people. And so then you have to think of identity as something that's negotiated with other people. Part of your identity is your value to other people. That's a huge part of it. And that's not subjective. Other people make that decision. Other people make that decision. A lot of us is externalized because we're such social creatures. And everyone has weaknesses. You know, you're going to degenerate along your weakest axis. The primary obligation of a parent is to serve as a proxy for the social and the natural world. But let's say the social world. Why? Well, because you want to train your child to be not only acceptable socially, but highly desirable socially. And the reason for that is that by the time they're about three, three to four is the transition period, they're going to be spending more time being socialized by their peers than by you. And that will increasingly be the case as they develop. And if you haven't encouraged them through judicious attention to be socially desirable, they're going to be rejected by their peers and then they fall farther and farther behind on the developmental trajectory. They sure. can't be the sort of person that insists that everyone else always play the game they chose. Part of what I was doing constantly as a clinical psychologist was helping people craft an ever more sophisticated identity. And what you want, you want to have the kind of identity that makes people line up to want to play with you. If you have to use force to get people to comply, it is a sign that you're not playing a very good game. Now, mm. maybe you don't, you can't think up a better one. There's nothing that's going to work. A state of emergency might, you know, because we allow governments to use extra force during a state of emergency. But nobody thinks that's optimal. Yep. So if people won't play because you're inviting them, then the game isn't configured very well and it's very unlikely to be stable. Think of identity as something that's negotiated with other people. Part of your identity is your value to other people. Other people make that decision. Other people make that decision. They sure. can't be the sort of person that insists that everyone else always play the game they chose. Think of identity as something that's negotiated with other people. Negotiated with other people. Negotiated with other people.